Uh, well, good morning, everyone. I'm very, very happy to be here in Eglinton Lawrence with Arlena and with Nathan uh, and with the kids that I've had the chance to chat with uh, just a moment ago. A little bit jealous that they get to go on the slide and the swings and, uh, and I'm up here, but very happy to be here to talk a little bit about an, a really important issue that families here in Eglinton Lawrence and Toronto St. Paul's and my home community of Vaughan Woodbridge are facing each and every single day. And of course, that's the affordability crisis. Now we know that under Doug Ford and his team, over the past four years, the cost of literally everything in people's day-to-day -day lives has gone in the wrong direction. The price of food, the price of getting around town, the price of raising a family, trying to rent or to purchase a home. Everything has skyrocketed under Doug Ford and his team. And that's not good enough for the people of Ontario. That's why the Ontario Liberal team signed on to a 19-point affordability pledge just the other day. 19 key elements that will literally make people's lives easier and more affordable starting on day one should we win on June the 2nd. And today I'm here to talk about childcare. And some of you might remember that last May, uh, many, many, many months before Doug Ford even bothered to send up to send up a proposal to the federal government, Ontario Liberals released our plan for early learning and childcare. We called it Care for Every Child. To take advantage of a federal government that was a, an early mover with respect to developing a national framework for a $10 a day licensed childcare plan. I think one of the saddest comments on Doug Ford's lack of understanding about what young families in particular face in this province was the idea that he was the last premier, the very last premier in this country to get an agreement in place with the federal government to belatedly start to deliver $10 a day licensed childcare. Totally unacceptable. And let me just say, earlier today we saw media reports that state quite clearly that the promised rebates for families that Doug Ford essentially falsely claimed would be flowing out this month, May, uh, those will not materialize. I think there are families right here in Eglinton Lawrence and Toronto St. Paul's and across this province who were counting on that help those are families that Doug Ford continues to abandon and let down. And again, that's just not good enough. So today, today I'm here to announce that an Ontario Liberal government would fully fund an expanded 18-month parental leave program and make sure that all of the gaps that might exist for some workers in this province relating to 18-month parental leave would be filled. That's a fully funded 18-month parental leave program for the hardworking families of Ontario. And that is so, so important, so important. By our calculation, this kind of plan, topping up and fully funding an 18-month parental leave program, could put up to $255 back in the pockets of Ontario families each and every single week, each week. So think about that for just a quick moment. With the cost of everything, in your day-to-day -day lives going up, spiraling out of control, skyrocketing under the Ford Conservatives, imagine what it would mean to have $255 back, back, that you could invest in raising your family, that you could invest in building a quality of life and building a future for yourself and for your family. This is tangible action, tangible action that will make life so much easier and so much more affordable for Ontario families. And of course, this is an addition, addition to our commitment to delivering $10 a day licensed childcare, but even quicker than that, within 100 days of taking office, $10 a day before and after school care for those families, for families that are right here in Eglinton Lawrence. Now, just so we're clear on this, $10 a day before and after school care could save a family here in the city of Toronto over $2,000 each and every single year, bringing the average cost of before and after school care from the current $26 in the city of Toronto down to $10 a day. These measures taken together with the rest of our plan and care for every child will accomplish two really important goals, goals that are near and dear to my heart and to the hearts of Ontario Liberals. Number one, with an early learning and child care system in place that is real, that is tangible, our youngest, our youngest, we see them right here today, our youngest will get the very best start in life. And secondly, 
as Ontario families continue to struggle, continue to be held back and pushed down by the Ford Conservatives who have the wrong priorities and the wrong objectives, this plan, Care for Every Child, along with the rest of the elements of the Ontario Liberal Affordability Pledge, will put real money back in your pocket, will make it so much easier and more affordable for you to live here in Ontario, to raise your family in Ontario, and to thrive in Ontario. I've said this repeatedly since this campaign began. This election is about the very stark and real choice. Again, four more years of being held back and pushed down by the Ford Conservatives, or four years plus going forward with a hopeful and fair and reasonable and balanced and fully costed Ontario Liberal plan that when implemented will guarantee that this province that we love so much is truly a place to grow. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you. Okay, so we've got reporters on site and also on the line today. So we'll start with reporters on the ground and then we'll move over to the line. Hi, Mr. Del Duke, Morning. with the Canadian Press. Um, I wanted to ask, first of all, uh, the, the NDP have put out a release accusing uh, the Liberals of fraudulently signing up the one of the candidates replacing um, the candidate for, um, sorry, for Chatham Kent Leamington saying that the old signatures were used to sign this person up. Uh, can you respond to that? Yeah, I think it's a really sad comment with 16 days left to go in this campaign uh, that Ms. Horvath and the Ontario NDP have resorted to desperation tactics. I think, I think I suspect at this point that they probably realize what most Ontarians realized watching the leaders debate just a couple of nights ago, that only the Ontario Liberals with our forward-looking, fair, fully costed election plan, a plan that will actually make sure our province is a place to grow, is resonating in particular with progressive voters right across this province. So I'm, I'm disappointed uh, to hear that Ms. Horvath and her team want to continue to focus on attacking me and Ontario Liberals instead of trying to take the fight to Doug Ford. Um, Ontario Liberals will remain exclusively focused on making sure that Doug Ford's first term in office is his last, and we will keep working hard to make sure that we win on June 2nd and then make sure that our province is a place to grow. Was the candidate signed up with fraudulent signatures? Again, I'm, I'm not going to stand here and engage in this petty back and forth with Andrea Horvath and her team. I, I will say that perhaps they should have spent more time trying to make sure that the first version of their platform was in fact the only version of their platform. But we know that three and a half weeks into this election, or three and a half weeks since they released their platform, they revised it three, four, maybe it's five times at this point. It took them forever to provide a fully costed plan. and even that costing is a little bit a little bit off. So in any event, again, I'm not here, just like I wasn't on Monday night in the leaders debate, not here to attack Ms. Horvath or the NDP. I know that, well, for over a year now, she spent an awful lot of her time and energy and resources coming after me. Uh, I said this at the debate stage the other night. Every time the Ontario NDP attacks me and attacks Ontario Liberals, Doug Ford and his team smile. Uh, well, I don't want Doug Ford smiling come June 2nd. I want him, I want him to be shown the door and I want to lead a new Ontario Liberal government that will invest in early learning and childcare, that will support workers and their economic dignity, that will make sure we deliver buck a ride province-wide and bring back an optional grade 13, that will make sure that small business entrepreneurs like the ones that I just literally drove past on Avenue Road uh, are not abandoned the way that they have been by Doug Ford as he's favored giant corporations and big box retail. That's what I'm going to remain focused on. On another note, I wanted to ask you about Islamophobia. Um, and would a Liberal government bring in uh, legislation similar to the NDP's Our London Family Act? Uh, and you know, what would a Liberal plan to tackle Islamophobia look like? So first of all, let's be clear, it's not the NDP's Our London Family Act, it's the National Council of Canadian Muslims who did all of the work uh, from the very beginning to not only put together and research that legislation, but then to advocate very strongly with every party in the legislature. I, I said on the record many months ago, uh, literally from the first day that we had the vigil in London last June, uh, after the horrific terrorist uh, and hateful act that was perpetrated against the family in London that lost their lives, said from the very beginning that we would move forward with legislation. I've already committed uh, to moving as quickly as I can to pass the Our London Family Act in support of what the National Council of Canadian Muslims has brought forward and done the work on. But here's I think the saddest comment in all of this, despite the fact that every opposition party supports the legislation and Doug Ford and his team say the right things, 
uh, with a majority in the legislature, they failed, Doug Ford and his team failed to make sure that the Our London Family Act was passed before the election started. And I think that was deeply discouraging and frankly, less than what Ontario's Muslim community should expect from a government at Queen's Park. Ontario Liberals will pass that legislation. Morning. Morning. Uh, so uh, 24 hours ago, you know, we had the latest revelations with uh, a null sample. You know, you've had some time to think on that. Uh, just wondering, do you guys still stand by him? Do you have any further comments on the situation? Still stand by null sample. He's a great candidate. He's working hard. I stand by him. Uh, he signed on to the Ontario Liberal plan to deliver real progress for families. And uh, I'm excited about what he and the rest of our candidates bring to the team. So, so you guys are calling for uh, Will Boma, or yeah. Boma uh, uh, to be removed over some you know, really homophobic comments in the past. So why is a uh, sample situation different? Well, first of all, if you look at what Will Boma said and uh, participated in, it is deeply, deeply offensive. Uh, it is, is something that has no place in the tolerant and uh, respectful and progressive Ontario that I believe in, the kind of Ontario that we are fighting to deliver on. I think it is unconscionable that Mr. Boma continues to uh, to be a member of Doug Ford's team. I think the fact that Doug Ford and his team made him a parliamentary assistant, uh, just like they've done with others that have uh, views that are regressive, I think, uh, I think demonstrates quite clearly that the team that Mr. Ford has on the field right now is not reflective of the kind of Ontario that, that we believe in, and I believe that most Ontarians believe in. So uh, here talking about childcare, uh, your platform has, I, I think it's three billion, can't remember off the top of my head, from that, that uh, revenue you will recoup from renegotiating childcare deals. You've, you've been a minister, you're a details guy. I sure. kind of fail to see how you would do that considering the ink has already been signed. So can you just kind of walk me sure. through a little bit how that would happen? So what we account for in terms of a renegotiated agreement with the federal government is actually 500 million a year for four years for a grand total of $2 billion. Uh, I have a strong feeling uh, knowing how passionate the federal liberal government is with respect to early learning and child care, that they would be deeply interested and keen to be at the table with a partner that actually supports early learning and child care. I can't even imagine how frustrating it must have been for the federal government as they, and by the way, for federal MPs from Ontario, as they watched every other province and territory in this country get deal, agreement after agreement after agreement and how Doug Ford and his team waited until the last possible second for two things. One, the last possible second to get an agreement, but frankly, even the last possible second to submit their plan to the federal government. So through all of those months when they were telling you, members of the media and us and the public, that the deal was close, that they were almost there, they hadn't even submitted their plan because they do not care or support early learning and child care the way that it needs to be supported in this province. So. I believe being a real partner at the table with a federal government on early learning and childcare will actually get us to where we need to be. But I will also say, in our fully costed plan, we build in significant contingencies each and every year. So in the off chance that we can't get an updated agreement with the federal government, we will still meet all of our fiscal targets. I noticed um when you said very passionate or very keen, you, you kind of pause there. Have there been any discussions with the federal government on this? On this specifically? Uh, at an official level, no. I, I've certainly heard from federal MPs, uh, many of whom I served with in the legislature, who were offended that this premier, Doug Ford and his team, spent week after week, month after month, claiming that an agreement was close, but not even submitting their homework. That, that's, not, that's not the way that I go about uh, leading, and it's not how I would lead in, in this really important file. So, I'm sorry, last one for me. That's okay. Um, so, uh, you know, you just said that you're, you know, you're working to make Doug, uh, Doug's first term, his only term. The NDP <laughs> is, it constantly says that job number one is beating Ford. So I'm wondering why you guys aren't, you know, potentially entertaining something like a supply and confidence or a coalition. Don't like, if well, both you have the same goal, isn't this something that, you know, you might want to be upfront with voters about? Well, I think there's a couple of things to remember. First of all, this would be a great question to ask Ms. Horvath today with respect to why she continues to spend all of her time and energy attacking me. Uh, I said it as clearly as I could on the debate stage the other night. I, my fight is with Doug Ford because he is determined to continue to pull Ontarians down and drag us backwards as a province. That, that isn't good enough for me. It's not good enough for, for my family or for the people of Ontario. I think we are now in a spot with 16 days to go where uh, you know, there is a very, very clear consensus that has developed uh, around the fact that uh, Ontario Liberals have momentum. 
that we are continuing to build that momentum because of how strong our team is, because of how compelling our plan is, in particular to deal with the affordability crisis. Uh, I believe that we are pulling away from the NDP, and that's become crystal clear. And I also believe Doug Ford will be defeated come June 2nd. So that's what I'm going to remain firmly focused on, talking about our plan, uh, standing with our team, and just working as hard as I possibly can to make sure that uh, Doug Ford is shown the exit door come June 2nd, and then we can work together to make sure Ontario is a place to grow. Okay, we've got a couple of minutes, so just going to open it up to the line. Over to you, Will. Okay, just a reminder to reporters on the line, if you could raise your hand using the Zoom function, I will add you to the queue for a question. Uh, the first question is Natasha mcdonald Dupuis from Radio Canada. Go ahead. Hi there. Morning. Um, morning. I was in Vaughan Woodbridge yesterday. Nice. I met a lot of, yes, met a lot of uh, Michael Tabolo supporters. Good. Uh, it looks like it's shaping up to be a tight race. Uh, constituents rejected you four years ago. Why should they <laughs> give you a second chance? Look, I think the people of the community that I've lived in for now more than 30 years, where my wife and I chose to continue to live when we got married uh, and raise our kids, where our kids attend publicly funded schools, a community that over six years saw the benefit of the kind of work ethic that I bring to the task of representing a community at Queen's Park when I delivered the funding for Vaughan's Hospital, the funding to kickstart the extension of Highway 427, when I got the approval for the 10-bed residential hospice that's just up the street from where, where we call home or where we live, uh, the six new public elementary and, and secondary schools that have opened because I was able to secure the investment for those schools in Vaughan, I think my neighbors recognize that I am someone who is hardworking and dedicated and devoted to their progress. And that's what I continue to focus on locally. It's what you can see I'm focusing on province-wide. Uh, I'm excited about the conversations that we are having both in Vaughan Woodbridge and right across this province with Ontarians who want to see that real progress. Uh, and again, I said just a second ago, I, I feel like there is a distinct sense of momentum around the Ontario Liberal campaign. I suspect that's going to continue to grow, not, not just grow on its own, but grow because we will continue to be focused on our positive plan, our fair and fully funded and forward-looking plan to make sure that Ontario is a place to grow, including for Ontarians who live in Vaughan Woodbridge. Some of your candidates might be wondering whether they'll have to give you their seat if you lose in, in Vaughan and Woodbridge. Is, is that the plan or, or would you resign as, <laughs> as leader if you lost that race? Yeah, look, my plan is to win in Vaughan Woodbridge on June 2nd and to win the election on June 2nd. So when I stand alongside candidates like Arlena and Nathan and all of the other women and men who are running for us, running with us, running to deliver for Ontario, and we talk about the affordability crisis that Doug Ford has allowed to spiral out of control as he's focused on making the richest in this province even richer and doing nothing for hardworking families who just want a government at Queen's Park that's on their side. We will continue to talk about our affordability pledge, buck a ride province wide, bringing back that optional grade 13, shrinking our class sizes, repairing our schools, treating our seniors with the respect that frankly they've earned in this province. I have not wavered at all in, with respect to my focus, and why I'm in this fight and who I'm fighting for. And that's what I'll continue to do. Okay, your next question is from Colin DeMello from Global News. Go ahead, Colin. Hey, good morning, Mr. Del Duca. And a shout out to Nathan Stahl, who's literally doing all the heavy lifting there behind you. <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to ask about, uh, you, realistically, what's going to happen on June 2nd. Do you think that the <laughs> Ontario Liberals at this point of the campaign have a realistic shot at actually forming a majority Liberal government? Yes, I do. I do. I, I, think, uh, I think throughout the uh, earliest days of this campaign, I think it was quite clear and evident that we were setting the agenda with ideas like Buck a Ride province-wide and the Seniors Care Revolution and bringing back an optional grade 13. I mean, these, these aren't talking points. These are real ideas that are captivating the imagination of Ontarians because they see their hopes, their concerns uh, reflected in those compelling ideas. Then we got to the leaders debate just the other night. I think it was very, very clear that night that the, the, the stark choice in this election campaign, Doug Ford wants to continue to pull people in this province down and hold us back. Uh, you know, as always, reading lines written for him by someone else, not able to look into the camera and explain, explain why he wants to continue to lead this province, stacked up against the Ontario Liberal plan and the Ontario Liberal team 
that understands why we're in this fight, understands why it's so important for Doug Ford to be shown the door come June the 2nd so that we can deliver on real progress. That, that choice was evident on Monday night, I think, to viewers who are watching at home and who are following up and reading coverage that continues to flow out in the aftermath of the debate. But it's why I'm here this morning to talk about delivering a fully funded extended parental sick leave so that families here in Eglinton Lawrence could get up to $255 back in their pockets every week under the Ontario Liberal plan. That's real money. That is real money. $255 every week when you're trying to raise a young child in this province, that is incredible relief. And that's just one element in the Ontario Liberal plan to deliver against and to confront the affordability crisis. Okay, thank you. So that's the expectation then you're setting out for all Ontario Liberals that you, under your leadership, that you'll form a majority government on June 2nd. What happens if you fall short of that goal, sir? Are you going to stick around as leader if you cannot, uh, you know, object? <laughs> Look, Colin, I, I know we like to spend a lot of time, those of us who uh, are in this business and those of us who cover this business, and I say this very respectfully, I know we like to spend a lot of time on the, the, the game of politics, but you know, I'm, I'm standing on a street here or adjacent to a street here in Eglinton Lawrence, Dillarain, and I'm looking at homes where people live. And inside those homes, people don't treat politics and democracy like it's a game. They don't they don't want to see leaders who, especially in advance of Election Day, uh, try to talk about or think about how we're going to divvy up power for ourselves. They want to know which leader is actually focused on them. They want to be able to sure that be sure that they can have their say come June 2nd. Now, I I think it is crystal clear and evident that there is one progressive option in this election campaign that has momentum. Uh, that is because we have set that that's us, by the way, and that's because we've set the tempo and the agenda from day one. It's because it was so clear at the debate stage just the other night uh, that we have the momentum, that we are taking the fight where it belongs to Doug Ford's backward vision for this province. Uh, we are the only option on the ballot, uh, and this is becoming quite evident, the only option on the ballot that can actually make sure Doug, Doug Ford's first term is his last. And that's what we'll continue to focus on. Okay, <clears throat> you're out of time now, but if we've missed you for a question, just send me an email. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Great to see you.